Hello, my fellow risers. Good evening. All right, so we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, so what did I do today? What are we going to talk about? I went somewhere. Didn't I? No. I didn't do anything this morning, and then Julian called and asked me if he wanted to come to his wife's office. So that was great. On my way there, though, is that is that the first thing? Let's, let's back up. Yesterday, I was on my bike, and this guy, he's running. He's on the right side of the path. And he spits to the left, which I thought was interesting. Um, cause he didn't look behind him or anything. And I was behind him. I thought, that's interesting. So I kind of thought about it a little bit. It went past him. And then I was like, yeah, that's interesting. So I go back to him and I go, wouldn't it be better to spit on the other side? And he goes, would well, it be better to wear a mask? Neither of us is wearing a mask. He said, it would be better to, to keep your distance. We're about two meters away from each other. I didn't really understand what was happening. And then he said, then I can't see behind me. And he put his headphone back in and carried on his way. Fortunately, and so this video is from yesterday, by the time I got the phone on the selfie stick, He'd already passed me again and headed off. Because after he put his headphone back in, I just, conversation was over, and I didn't know. I didn't hadn't gotten anything out of it. And so I just carried on my way. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. This wind. Fuck! I have so much to talk about. I don't have time for this shit. Jesus fucking Christ. Time for this shit. And uh, so by the time I got my phone on the selfie stick, extended it, he had already passed me and turned and gone away. So then I'm on my way to my... Okay, where were we? On my way to Julian's wife's office, and this is the first time I've been there. I'm riding along, and you got to watch out, make sure a car doesn't decide to open its door or pull off, right? And as I'm going by, there's this car with its hazards on. And as I go by, it pulls out. Well, I wasn't very happy about that. So I turn around, you know, once I'm clear or whatever, and I flick him off. So he pulls up, and he goes, um... And he goes, why the hell did you flick me off? And I go, you pulled out, like, as I was going right past you. And he goes, I I didn't touch you, did I? I go, no. He goes, I saw you. And I go, I don't know that you saw me. All I know is that I have this feeling of almost getting hit. And he goes, and so you insult me because of that? I go, yeah. He goes, well, well, you know, you don't fucking. And And it was interesting is that. He keeps sort of touching the gear shift, touching his seatbelt at various moments as though he's going to get out of the car. But he never does. And also, I think he started to get confused because all I was doing was explaining. I was like, look, I got scared because you pulled out like that. That scared me. So I flicked you off. And I was also like at one point trying to explain, like, what if I had noticed him pulling off? And I had swerved too much or something, and there was another car coming. You know, because what if I had felt like, well, I didn't say this part, but what if I had felt like, okay, I'm definitely going to get hit by this car. I better swerve and hope that there isn't a car behind me kind of thing. And what was interesting, though, is as we're having this conversation, although I didn't say that last thing, he, he, he it's like he wanted to be reasonable, but didn't know how or was a bit tortured about it didn't know whether that's what he wanted to do because part of him keeps saying you know you don't insult me and i saw you and all this stuff and i keep saying well i don't know that you saw me how the fuck am i supposed to know that and the fact that you didn't touch me um well in the moment with the problem occurred before i could know whether or not i was going to be touched the problem occurred when the impression was given that i could be touched and pushed out into the road so the fact that after the fact I wasn't touched has nothing to do with what the original problem was. My flicking off was about the problem. It's not about what happened after the problem because that did not resolve the problem. The fact that I didn't get hit didn't make me feel better about being scared of getting hit. So anyway, um, wow, time flies, huh? And then I was in the, the office and two interesting things happened. Uh, a woman and a man that I met. Two people, they don't work there. They just come in and because Julian loves to invite everyone in and stuff. And blah, blah, blah. Na- you know, neighbors, friends, whatever. So because I'm there, Julian forces everybody to speak English. The other employees, the customers, whatever. My buddy, yes. Yes. French, French is not important. It's not in international. Uh, yes. Not international. And so she says that she's interested in getting English lessons. And so she asked me how much I charge. And so I looked at Julian. Um, or maybe I was already looking at Julian, and he said 15 euros. And I was like, all right, if you if you say so. 
And she goes, oh, 15 euros is expensive. And, cause she, and she was like, because I would need lots of hours. And so then at some point shortly after that, with her comments about that being expensive in mind, um, I said something like, I don't need money, which is, of course, a silly thing for me to say, because I don't actually know what it's like to not have money. But I said that I don't need money, right? And she goes, what? What do you mean? Everybody needs money. You know, and she's talking about wealth and so on. And, you know, Bill Gates, he's still working to get that paper. And I was like, yeah, well, he's doing it because it's, you know, a passion. He likes what he does. She's like, his money's making money. All this stuff, all this obsession with, you know, all this capitalist obsession with and it's funny, so if she so she did ask for my number after that. If she texts me, I'm going to say, you know what, you convinced me that I need money. It's going to be 40 euros an hour. Oh, and then with her, what's interesting is I said that, you know, I, my work is my videos. That, and she, she said, you, there's something you need to learn about French. Travailler. Which means to work. Means to work for money. Doesn't mean just to work. If she kept referring to my YouTube. That's a distraction. That's you just having fun. That's you playing about. That's not your work. I was like, that's insane. But then when she said this French thing, I, there's nothing I could say to that. I couldn't say, no, that's not true. Because it's very possible that I missed that nuance. But but no, that's absurd. I think I think I would have noticed there was some other word used for students, for anybody who wants to work on anything that they enjoy. I mean, and a pr that's meant to be productive, meant to achieve a result. So I looked up the word travailler completely false. It means to produce, you know, a result. It means to work. <laughs> um, my friend texted me today, asked me for help with the translation. She was translating from English to French and was having trouble um, with some of the English. She said, hey, uh, can you help me with this thing? I just remembered, you know, the person that I was with for like the last few months. Because, you know, I didn't bat an eye. I helped. And then, and then I was just on my bike following Julian back from the the office to the maiden. And I was like, wait a minute, that's so funny how I was sort of dating someone who, if I sent her a message, hey, can you help me with this? She would be upset that I didn't ask her how she slept. I haven't heard from Mirage in days. I don't give a shit. Why would I care? I'm completely secure in our relationship. The fact that she hits me up for help, I don't feel taken advantage of. I understand why she felt that way. And I know that it had nothing to do with me. The problem is that she didn't. She would always forget that it had nothing to do with me. So she would argue that, that you know, oh, I should, you know, I, I, I should have asked how she slept. I should have asked how she was doing. She doesn't work for me and all this stuff. And it's like, bro, this has nothing to do with me. I didn't do anything wrong here. I mean... We're, we're two people who are close. They should be allowed to come to you for help. And you can tell me if you didn't sleep well. That's fine. I mean, or I'll ask. But right now, I just need a hand here. There was an, uh, an, another guy in the office, and he said, because we were talking, blah, 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 and it came up that I live in the woods. He's like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. And he's like, you don't want to, like, get a place for yourself? I mean, y'all are, y'all, like, what? To work means only to work in order to get paper money. And living in a, in a concrete, in a building uh, made by someone else for someone else, where you pay, and then if you can't pay, then it's no longer, you're gone. It's not even that you, always right, it's not like you own it. If all of a sudden you have money problems, you are gone. You have no more rights to this place. And in a shared space, a shared, you know, all this stuff, that's a thing of your own, a cubicle in a, in a box. I mean, you know, a drawer. That's a thing of your own. I've got a thing of my own. Nobody's kicking me out of here, even though I'm not giving anybody any money. This is earth. I put all this together. Do I want a thing of my own? Sure. And I fucking got one better than, well, I don't really know what his situation is. So yesterday in the conversation with the boyfriend of the director, he said something about how we have evolved intellectually. And whatever we were talking about made me realize that it gave me an interesting thought, which is that we have not evolved intellectually like since the Greeks at all. What's happened, though, is certain beliefs have just been added to the unacceptable list. Bloodletting to cure disease, I mean, witchcraft, fucking persecution of witches, Greek gods, Native American gods, you know, whatever fucking myths, you know. We just added to this list of unacceptable beliefs. We still have the same level of bullshit ideas. Um, and it's even worse because we have so much more information about the world. And now a lot of our beliefs directly conflict with the information that we have in the world.
Oh my god, I just realized that I could forgive a Greek for believing, you know, whatever. He needed an explanation. No better one was available. So tell your stories, bro. Now we've got so many explanations. I mean, not even 1% understanding or, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Certainly, you know, there's a fuckload more out there to learn. And there's a bunch that we think that we've learned that we could be wrong, that we're, that we're wrong about. But we know so much more than we did. We have explanations for things we attributed to God's. And despite that, so, I mean, if you want, if you want to say that because of the difference in belief systems, we've intellectually evolved, I will tell you that no, we've intellectually devolved. I don't think that's the case either. But um, yeah, no, I think it's been pretty steady. Uh, so why would I respond to that if you had said that? Because if you're saying that we've let intellectually evolved because our beliefs are better, then I'm going to say, well, if, 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 if what, if I, um, how reasonable our beliefs are, is the judge, is the decider of um, the direction of our evolution, then our beliefs are even more unreasonable now than they were before because they are even worse um, conclusions to, they are, the, they are even worse conclusions to draw from the available evidence. Before the Greek gods, maybe a shitty conclusion to draw from the evidence, but there wasn't much evidence. There certainly wasn't, a, you know, yeah, there wasn't evidence that, you know, to already answer questions that gods were supposed to be the answer to. There were lots of gaps, so there was space for the gods. Now there's a lot less space. And yet we keep them there. We try to trick ourselves into making room. But your presumption that our um, beliefs have changed in their reasonableness is actually wrong. So if you're going to tell me that it's increased, I'm going to say it's probably decreased. But the, um, the assumption, I was wrong about what the assumption is. The assumption is, the assumption that the premise that's wrong. So why would I respond that way if that's not what I think? Because the question presumes a certain thing. So what is that fucking assumption? That our um, beliefs have changed in reasonableness at all? So if you're saying that they've changed, then I'm going to say they've got, gotten worse. But I don't think they've changed at all. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And if you followed that, send me your phone number and a picture of your butt. And come move in here. And if you're a man... Let's, let's try. Hmm? Yeah, so we haven't evolved. We just added to the list of unacceptable beliefs. Like, people who are not racist cannot justify not being racist. They're just not racist it's because it's, it's, it's such a crime to be racist. Is that true? What I, I don't know. Is that something even I believe? I don't know. Oh, and I was editing a video. Or I did so much editing today. Yeah, so this is me working in the office. It was great. And there are a couple things that I noticed. One is that uh, that leash that Neo kept breaking. Two days with the horse leash and didn't make it. A horse leash, it's supposed to break. So it's not an indication of his strength. And I would suspect that because, of course, obviously if a leash is made for a, a horse, um, my dog is not stronger than a horse. Why didn't I say that in the video? But you are, of course, tempted to be like, wow, my dog broke a horse leash. I was like this close to saying, wow, my dog broke a horse leash. I mean, I did say it, but not in that sense of like, I'm definitely taking proud. I just said, this broke a thing that's supposed to be for horses. I didn't say, yeah, right. I didn't exactly say my dog's so stronger than a horse, obviously. But um, yeah, but now, you know, horses sometimes they, they, they start to get a fright they go, like that, right? And if the leash actually holds them back, then they can kill themselves because of the force of their departure. And if they're not allowed to depart, that energy and that, you know, that has to affect something. And then also on October 30th, I said that there are two lessons or something, or two parts of the lesson. And the one is to not um, trust ourselves. And the other one is to um, know that we don't know why our self feels the way that it does. So you can't trust what feels right and you aren't aware of the reasons that it feels right. But of course, to not trust, that's corollary of not knowing why. So really, the lesson is actually just we don't know why we feel what leads us to think and believe the things that we think and believe, whether that's information rarely, or at least um, only partially. Yeah, it's usually just partially. 
um, whether that's information or whether that's some other sort of miscal potentially potential miscalculation in our unconscious, we don't know what led us to to feel that A is true or B is true. But the corollary of that then is that when we feel that A is true and B is true, because we don't know how our mind got to that point, we shouldn't trust it. So it actually, it's not two aspects of the same thing. It's just one thing and it's corollary. So as I mentioned in a video that I um, published, well, that I'm gonna publish tomorrow actually, but that I recorded today, J Julian, no, yesterday, Julian uh, likes to call me uh, now for the past few days, he started calling me Omaha Beach. Ever since I met him, he'll always, anytime he tells people I'm American, he'll always talk about the Americans that landed, you know, the D-Day um, landing in Normandy and uh, all the Americans that died to save the French and so on. And he says, oh, they're so young. And he says, so he always says that I came and saved the French. And so, yeah. so there's Utah Beach and Omaha Beach are two of the areas of, you know, the landing. And there's a story, apparently, that, well, he just keeps reciting, he just keeps telling everyone that um, they were just named after basically where two of the soldiers were from. There is two beaches in French in our country. There is many, many soldiers, U.S. soldiers that died. My battle name, my, my nom de guerre, my nom de guerre is uh, Omaha Beach. The problem is, Julian. Oh. Okay. How how do you say salop in English? Beach. Julian, how do you say plage in English? Beach, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> is this not me? <laughs> Uma Beach and Utah Beach. <laughs> <laughs> when the French say bitch, they say beach. So anytime I hear a French person say beach, I immediately think bitch. So he keeps calling me Omaha bitch. Omaha Beach, you know. And uh, which is... Uh, Omaha Beach. I don't know why I put it that way either. <laughs> I don't know what that act was. But anyway. Uh, oh, and then also on November 7th, I believe I made a video uh, where I talked about uh, my mom and I talked about my sister and how she's not coming out here and how I'm going to be totally unsatisfied, dissatisfied with her, um, ex her, you know, explanation of her decision to not come out here, um, or, you know, and live here in the woods a little bit. Um, and indeed, of course, that's what's happened. Totally disappointed. Can't say how it's possibly reasonable. So whatever. Okay. Um, good night.